Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Steve Peters, and I'd like to welcome you to a new edition of the Local History Show on Shaw Cable. It's my distinct pleasure this evening to have as my guest uh, Mr. Don Cousins. Don is born and raised in St. Thomas and has been a lifelong student and just an interested person in local history. I don't think you'll find anybody else in St. Thomas or even in Elgin County as knowledgeable as Don is in knowing about the early sites and uh, locations in and around St. Thomas and Elgin, but also knowing a great deal about uh, the families and genealogies of various families in Elgin County. And tonight we're going to be showing slides from the, the Cameron collection. And uh, I, I'd like to welcome Don to the show this evening and uh, ask Don to tell us a little bit about Ian Cameron and the, the background of these slides. Well, thanks very much, Steve. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. Uh, Mr. Cameron was, as you and I are very interested in the uh, history of St. Thomas, and uh, always was. He came from an older St. Thomas family. His mother was a McLean. His grandfather, McLean, was a school teacher, school principal at the old Central School on Wellington Street, and then he became a lawyer in 1867 and uh, practiced for the remainder of his life. Uh, Mr. Uh, Cameron's father was also a lawyer in St. Thomas, and uh, the family carried on. It was one of the oldest law practices in the province. Mr. Cameron was uh, in the first war. He was a, a pilot, one of the, the uh, few pilots in the war, and uh, he crashed over in uh, Europe and be, was a prisoner of war and uh, came back, and shortly after he came back, he became sheriff of the county of Elgin. And uh, all, always he had this uh, love of history, local history, and uh, he collected a lot of local interest items, in, in particular photographs. And after the Second War, he was active in the Second War also, although he didn't go overseas, but both he and his brother Hugh were very active in the local militia in St. Thomas. And after the war, he uh, took his photographs and had them put onto glass slides. And these glass slides, which uh, we're going to uh, do tonight, uh, were uh, photographs that were put on in Toronto. At that time, he could get them done for about uh, $1.50 each. It, uh, the man who did it was a Czechoslovakian, and he did some artwork on them. And they really have uh, uh, stood the test of time well also. Uh, some of these are, are very distinct and uh, fine photographs. Others, of course, are not as good. But I think just having viewed some of these slides in the past, a lot of these are copies of photographs that we don't have the originals today. Some of them, that's yeah. quite true. That's quite true. Some of them are. So this is really our only visual record of of some of these old photographs that once existed. Yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, Mr. Cameron, uh, of course, uh, he was born in 1898. He was born on the day that the courthouse burned, uh, July the 1st, 1898, just as a coincidence. And uh, as he grew older, he uh, felt he couldn't uh, uh, show the slides the way he wanted to. And so he uh, asked me if I would take it over. There was a committee formed. I had the slides, I've had the slides now for about 23 years, 23, 24 years. And uh, before he died, he formed a committee, and uh, uh, this committee is the Cameron Trust. And uh, I don't own the slides, They're, they belong to the Trust and will eventually go to the people of St. Thomas and Elgin County. But I've, I've shown them uh, probably 100 times in the last 24 years and I uh, enjoy very much uh, doing this. Mr. Cameron coached me on the slides, each slide we went through, and uh, I, I, as a matter of fact, I saw these slides first in 1949 in the old Talbot Hotel in the trophy room at an Optimus Club meeting, and I was just fascinated by the, the, the slides and the talk that Mr. Cameron gave. Mr. Cameron didn't show as many slides as I usually show at a time. But he had, he had an anecdote for every slide, and he knew every slide oh so well. Uh, I wish I could have got him on tape. Would, yeah. That would have been ideal. Great. 
Well, without further ado, um, what we're maybe do you want to describe? The, this is a very vast collection of slides. It uh, covers uh, I don't know how many how many do you estimate are in the whole collection, Don? There, there's between four and five hundred. Four and five hundred. So we're going to start through a, a small part of the slides tonight, and uh, tonight we're going to be starting on Talbot Street. We're going to do the Old West End. We'll uh, show some of the outskirts and go up Talbot Street and go down some side streets, but we won't go further east than Elgin Street. That'll be about the end of the uh, presentation tonight. Great. So we're going to start with this old slide, and Steve, by all means, uh, come in with comments at, at any point sure. because you know the slides. You've shown them yourself and uh, helped me out here. Th this is the earliest represented uh, picture. It's not a photograph. It's from a, uh, an oil painting by, uh, I don't know, oil or watercolor, yeah, by sure. uh, Sir Richard Airy. And uh, it's of the west end of Talbot Street, looking towards St. Thomas from the Fingal Hill. Shows in the, the uh, foreground the Fingal Bridge, uh, a forerunner of the present for uh, Fingal Bridge. And uh, about in the center of the picture, halfway up the picture on the left-hand side is a hotel. And that hotel was known by various names over the years, the Mitchell House, the Caledonia House, Keeley's Hotel. It was there from about 1830 to 1885, and it burned. And uh, in 1873, there was a celebrated uh, murder took place outside of that hotel. The Ninhams. Uh, were father and son. They were Indians. They had been at the Wallace Town Fair, and they got into a, an argument with uh, two local St. Thomas boys, and the uh, feud continued after they got to the hotel, and the old man Ninham was uh, killed in the in the uh, fight that ensued. The two boys uh, got away, and uh, one died and one was brought back to justice and he died in jail also. Both of St. Thomas' prominent families. Now on the right hand side of the roadway going up is the Mandible House, which is, uh, has disappeared, it, I think it went maybe about 1860. The Mandible uh, family were the second oldest family in St. Thomas next to the Rappelges. Uh, the only building still standing that shows in this picture is the old church on the right-hand side. I, it's rather hard to see, but uh, you maybe can see the spire of the old church. Yes. Uh, that was built in 1822 to 24, opened in 24, and uh, that's the only, the only uh, thing in that picture that's still around today. Is it possible? There's an old building standing down at uh, the northwest corner of the Fingal Road and uh, Sunset Drive, um, where Hamilton Warren's first store is, is there a possibility that that building is? It's a quite an old building. Would, could it be in this picture, or is that uh, is that building uh, date after this painting was? This is about 1840, you say? Yes, yes. I don't know. I know the building, of course, that you're talking about, and I rather feel that it dates from a, a later period, possibly 1850 or 60, but. Uh, I know that there are people that think that, as you do, that the building does date prior to that. Maybe someday with uh, some more evidence we'll be able to tell that. But it doesn't show in this picture. But uh, there are trees and that, that it could be hidden if it were behind those. So at this time in St. Thomas, uh, number four highway didn't extend all the way south, did it? You had to go, you would go up the hill into St. Thomas and then down Stanley Street? That's right. It was, the uh, creek wasn't bridged until 1845, 44 or 45. And although this horse and wagon is going across Talbot, uh, Talbot Street Hill there, uh, going towards Port Stanley, they wouldn't be able to get through at this point. They had to go up yeah. the hill and down Port Stanley Street. Port Stanley Street. Now, now Stanley Street shortened to Stanley Street, but it was Port Stanley Street. This, this picture is in the uh, same location as the other one. Uh, it's probably about 1860. The, there you see the Talbot Street Hill going up uh, there, and on the left in the middle of the picture, the uh, hotel, Mitchell House, 
Uh, you can't see the uh, mandible host in this picture, I don't believe, unless it's, uh, you can just see the top of it maybe behind the trees there. Yes. There are a few more houses in this picture. Again, I don't think you can see that, uh, the building that you were speaking of at the no, corner. No, that's a good point It's still there, there but uh, I don't see it, but uh, it's not that clear at that particular point. Um, this is a different bridge, Fingal Bridge, and there, of course, have been several bridges put across there over the years. But at this point, you would be able to go down the gravel road. Yeah, I believe the road, uh, about 1845, I think, that the province put the road directly through uh, the plank road uh, from London to Port Stanley. So by this point, you would have been able to go right south. Yeah, that's right. Now, th this is a picture about the same time. It's a, it's a beautiful picture taken from the top of the west hill overlooking St. Thomas. The Fingal Bridge on the right, uh, uh, the Mitchell House in the center part of the, dominating the center part of the uh, picture. Now, can you see that uh, that building in this picture? It, it just, you never no, seem it, to be able no, to see that's, that. No, that's a good point. And that, uh, I've, I've never thought that that building was, was as old as a lot of people think it is. It's old as far as today's standards are, but I just don't think it's quite as old as we think it might be. Yes. Th this is a, a tremendously clear, beautiful picture. It sure Eight is a good six. shot into Spawn's Flats there, and uh, unfortunately it, it, it was a little clearer. I'm sure, I suppose we could probably see the courthouse, but... Uh, it's Yeah, that's true. It's a... It's, uh, it's before the railway bridge, of course, went across. The railway bridge went right across in that location right in the middle of the picture there in 1872. Now this is a picture taken from the same hill, but we're over uh, much further to the north. And on the right-hand side, you can see the railway bridge, just a, a, a piece of the railway bridge there. It, it too is a good picture. St. Thomas being in the distance there. So that that bridge is still standing standing there today. On I guess on the west side of that would be the the old Vinceberry's old restaurant, and uh, it's yeah. now a church down in there, I believe today. Yeah, that that bri there's a bridge there, but it's not that bridge. not that bridge. But there is still a bridge at that location. Yeah. Now we're not quite over that far though. I I think it would be over a little bit more to the north, that uh, building you're speaking of. Now, some of the buildings we're looking at in the center of the picture, are they buildings that are hanging over the over Talbot Street, like in the area of Jumbo? At one point, there was buildings on both sides of Talbot Street. Would some of those buildings be actually built on the hillside, do you think, down there? The, these pictures, uh, these buildings here, uh, they could be. They could be, but I rather think that most of those buildings burned in 1863 and the ones that were rebuilt in that location were more substantial yes. and uh, not frame structures either. I, I kind of think that, uh, I'm not sure when the, the uh, bylaw was passed, that on Talbot Street they had to be brick buildings. They couldn't build any, uh, any uh, frame buildings. Now you see the, the bridge, the wooden trestle on the right hand side of that picture and the next slide shows you another view of that trestle, uh, a more direct on. Now that trestle, when it, was, uh, when it was built, was, was all wood. It was all wood, that's right. Uh, I don't know whether I can tell you this, but uh, at that time... Uh, this is what, about 1871 that the, truss, the first trestle was built? I think 72. 72. It, it didn't take long to build that trestle. There was a competition between, not a, an official competition, but be, between the uh, Great Western and the uh, Canada Southern, who was going to have the trestle up first. And uh, Great Western beat them by a few days. But it didn't take long. It was prefabricated on the ground and uh, raised in sections like that. Uh, there's over a million board feet of lumber in that bridge. Now that trestle, though, Today, and it's since been, there was a steel trestle and then the, the current concrete uh, abutment trestle that's standing. But this trestle is much longer than it, than it yeah. is today, isn't it? Th this is, over, a lot of fill this is over 1,300 feet long, and the present uh, 
The present one's uh, just over 800. So there's about 500 feet of fill that's been put in along Center Street uh, both, along the edges? Both sides, On I both believe. sides. Both yeah. sides, I believe. Uh, traffic, railway traffic never stopped on any of the uh, buildings of the subsequent bridges. This is another view from the, the west bank of the Talbot Hill, Fingal Hill, and uh, to the right of the picture is the Fingal Road, and, and again the bridge going across. Uh, it's, it takes a little zigzag that it doesn't take today. It's just quite a, a little bit different. It goes to a, a zigzag to the gravel road and then left and right again. I don't know how long that, that uh, was like that. It's a magnificent uh, engineering feat when you think about it today, but uh, you know that was all built by hand. Oh, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful structure. But it, it didn't last long. It was only there for uh, uh, less than 10 years, and they built the iron bridge that uh, replaced it. That's a little closer view of the bridge. And this is a close-up of the catwalks. There were, there were uh, three levels, I believe, of catwalks on the bridge, and there was a watchman there at all times. You had wood burners and uh, and the sparks and cinders and so forth from the train uh, would uh, possibly ca uh, cause a fire. But uh, to my now, and there were buckets of sand and water along, and that's what the watchman had to do, keep those buckets full. And uh, to my knowledge, there were, n there were never any fires. On no, I've never heard of a fire. Never, never heard of one, but uh, it could have happened, although it didn't. There must have been an awful, when they took this bridge down, there must have been an awful pile of lumber. You wonder what happened to that, whether it went to building, to, uh, into buildings in St. Thomas or what? Well, you know, I've never heard any accounts or seen any newspaper accounts of no. this trestle coming down and the, the steel trestle going up. It's a, but I'm sure they wouldn't have burned it. No, because I'm sure it would have been very good timber. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't there that long, so I'm sure it, uh, it uh, would have been sold. That's another thing we've never heard anything about, but quite likely there could be buildings around today that contain lumber that came from the old bridge. Uh, where are we? That's from the trestle, what, looking southerly? Is that Spawn's Flats? That's right, too, yes. Yeah, that's... Uh, so we're looking at Spawn's Flats, and the, the houses towards the top of the picture would be, in, like, on, Port St on Stanley Street and then Margaret. Yeah. And the gravel road going uh, across the picture from east to west, uh, from north to south. It's very much, you know, when you think about it today, especially Spawn's Flats, you drive and there's the trees have so so covered up uh, the hillside, you really can't see the flats. But it's it's obvious in looking at a picture here that those hillsides were quite bare. Yes, uh, I should say that the picture was probably taken about 1875. Uh, quite a few of the pictures in the collection. These, these, these pictures here, these are from um, the stereo cards that were produced by William Lindop, a uh, photographer in St. Thomas? Yes, they yeah. were. Yeah. I'm not saying all of them, but quite a few of them were from those stereo cards, a few of which have survived. There were about 100 of them, and uh, I think probably 25 at the most would, he, would uh, still be around, but someday they'll show up. I'm sure they will. This is another view, but this is a much later view, uh, looking over the creek, or over the creek, over the gravel road towards uh, St. Thomas, and in the background, although it's not very clear, is the Old English Church. I think this was taken around the turn of the century, this particular picture here. Not, it was after Linda, that's for sure. Now, before we go up the hill and go into St. Thomas, there's a couple of sites I'd like to show you. This uh, Rudolph and Begg Brewery. It was uh, along the gravel road. Uh, well, where was it? Closer to Stanley Street, certainly, than Tall. Today, it's Street. about it's about at 85 Sunset Drive. If you were to come down the Stanley Street Hill and go right, and just before you cross the bridge, it's on the the west side of uh, Number Four Highway. Yes. But uh, there, that's uh, the brewery. There's been a brewery, or there had been a brewery on that site since uh, about 1832. Elf and Paul 
uh, started a brewery and it was later taken over by a gentleman by the name of William Riser and he operated it into the 1880s when uh, Henry Rudolph and George Begg bought it and uh, the brewery was operated up until 1916 and uh, when Prohibition shut it down and it was, uh, I know as a bottle collector of it and, and I know you and your own collection too have a number of bottles from this brewery but this is a, probably a later picture and it's a quite a substantial brewery by this point. Oh it was a they tell the story of teams of horses uh, and wagons being lined up to take their grain into uh, the brewery to sell it to the brewery. It was a very going concern in this part of Western Ontario, Rudolph and Begg Brewery. Uh, it had a very good reputation. There was nothing shoddy or, uh, or uh, anything about this brewery. It was just a, a very high caliber operation. And the families that uh, ran it were very prominent people in St. Thomas, the yes. Beggs and the Rudolphs and the Risers. Uh, a part of this building, uh, a storage shed of this building, was still standing till about five, six yep. years ago. And it burned, the and old barn. Burned, yeah. The old barn that was out back. And uh, it was very much in evidence, and it was a shame that uh, it's everything's gone now. Uh, actually, the... Uh, the, the old se cellars were still around until not too long ago also. Well, they're still there, but they're filled, filled in. in. They're still there underneath the ground. Some days somebody will dig them out, maybe. Uh, it was a shame because they were beautiful. Uh, were you ever down in no. there, weren't you? No, I've seen photographs of well, them. Well, it's not that long ago. I don't know why you uh, didn't get down to see those because they were quite beautiful. Not large, but uh, very fine. Brick, brick all around, top, bottom, ceiling, everything. Now, another uh, prominent building at one time was uh, this toll gate. Now, this was very close to the building you described that was once owned by Mr. Barry, and it was a Brownie's restaurant down there, very close to that site, uh, very close to uh, the traffic light at the intersection of Wellington Road and Number 4 Highway just a little, little to the west along, just where you make the bend. Uh, this this building stood there. I'm not sure how long it was there, but it was there till 1906 when the tolls went off. And after that, the building was sold and it was moved, and it's still standing and used as a residence north of Talbotville today. But So the, the purpose of the tolls was the same as the purpose of tolls today, that to, to help pay for the cost and the maintenance of the roads? Yes, uh, every year or every so many so many years, I'm not just sure what there would be. The roads would be up for bid, and uh, the different people would bid on these roads. Maybe uh, uh, ten thousand dollars for the road between St. Thomas and Port Stanley, and then the people that won the bid would set up and maintain these toll gates and make sure there were toll keepers there and they would collect tolls and they would get, now I don't know whether they, I think they got all the tolls, but there was a regulation toll that they couldn't charge more than, uh, than regulation. But there were ways to avoid the toll too. <coughs> now, if a person lived in Talbotville and wanted to come to St. Thomas, he had to go through this toll gate. But if he went around by Fingal or down a back road and came up the Talbot Street Hill, he could avoid the toll gate. Yes. And, and that happened. And in St. Thomas, there were also tolls what, on Talbot Street out near Woodworth and also um, out near the Holy Angel Cemetery, too. Was yes. there also a toll yes. booth out yes. there? And there was a toll gate at Port Stanley. Port Stanley also. Yeah. Now, be, prior to this, there was a toll gate at the top of Sandy Mount Hill, too. And that was another, I think there's an account of the same thing, where people would go around through the, the Rogers property well, and they, would, they were allowed to cross the property and they would bypass the toll? Anything to avoid the toll. toll yeah. And another thing, if a person or a farmer was coming into St. Thomas every day with milk, say, to bring his milk into the factory or cheese, milk into the cheese factory, you could buy a yearly toll. You would pay your uh, yearly amount and then you could just go through the toll. You wouldn't have to pay every time. Mm -hmm. It wasn't expensive, but then two or three cents was, was more than it is today, that's for sure. Now... We're going to go up to the, into St. Thomas now, and before we go to Talbot Street, we'll just go around 
have a look at the uh, church, the old church. Now, Steve, you know more about the church than I do. Uh, you've been so this is what, looking south on Church Street from about Center Street? Yes. Looking directly at the church and the, the large house, of the it, Risden House or the, the, the Day House? It's Sam Day, I believe, built this house. And it's still standing at Church in Walnut today. Doug uh, Campbell, Campbell yes. owns that house. For many years it was occupied by uh, the Carey family. James Carey lived in this house. But I'm quite sure it was built by... Uh, by uh, the Risden House was across the street. I, I think that uh, Sam Day built this house. It, this isn't a particularly good picture of the church or anything, but because it's got that house in it, it, it adds just a little bit. Uh, you wonder, there's some large maples still along uh, Church Street today, and you can see some little saplings there. I don't know whether they'd be the same trees or not. I don't know what you th this photograph would date from. but uh, I, I would imagine it would date from the 1880s or 90s. Yeah. I think maybe 1890 at the latest. Uh, it's very possible that they could still be the same. But you can see the the church here too. It didn't. Uh, the lich gate, which was out front, uh, wasn't built until 1948. And no, there's I another. I remember when the lich gate. Uh, now, just let's check that other. Well, we can't see the the uh, east side of the walkway there. The, they those graves were. I think they're all after 1900. Well, this must be a later picture because that uh, the tall one there is uh, Senator Wilson's... Uh, 1911? 1911, thereabouts. Yeah. Well, all these graves along on the uh, east side, I believe, were after 1900. Uh, they didn't use that section of the cemetery, and then uh, they started selling that. It's quite easy to date a picture if you, uh, you know when certain parts of the cemetery were opened up. There you can just see to the uh, left side of the picture part of the Thomas Williams home. Piece of St. Thomas history that this year we're going to see uh, after, what, uh, over 100 years. Yeah. It certainly is. And there's another picture. Now this, this would be an older picture. I think this might date to the... Uh, 1860s, maybe. I think it could very well go to the 1860s. That's a very interesting picture because that uh, that shows the old ravine that runs. This would be standing what about the end of King Street, mm -hmm. looking to uh, yes. looking to yes. the southeast, and it shows the old ravine that uh, was eventually filled in at the cemetery with uh, with old city refuse, and uh, those graves were laid out as plot as as plots and sold starting in 19. They were surveyed and started sold in 1932, so it's quite interesting to see uh, how deep the ravine is there, and. Uh, Seems is like the Chisholm Monument? You can't see the Chisholm Monument, so it would date, and that's 1873, so... Yeah, there, there seems like a lot of stones in that cemetery, though, at that point. There sure does. But, uh, of course, a lot of those stones aren't standing today. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you have the original of this picture, I think. Isn't it a little no. carte de visite? I think, I think it's different, yeah. Oh, is it? Yes, it's a different one, but it is taken from the same place, same location. I don't think it's the same one. I think mine's earlier. Than is it? That's a, that, this is a beautiful picture, though, because it does give you that idea of that old ravine that, that has been filled in. I don't think my picture has as many stones in it as this one. I must check that. Well, there's another picture. Um, probably a, very, or a little later, but not too much later. <coughs> Still a lot of stones there, and there's a lot of vacant, uh, vacant uh, land there. Does your ravine show in that one? It looks like it. Yeah. It certainly looks like the ravine is evident there. A, a very uh, irregular, uh, rough-looking fence, certainly. It certainly the, is. The, the cemetery has, uh, and of course the church, has had periods of ups and downs over the years, and it's uh, been very much neglected since they stopped uh, services there in 1877. and. Uh, it goes downhill, and then uh, there's a big restoration committee. And well, uh, this 1994 marks the 100th anniversary of the the first restoration of the church, and yeah. I think the restoration that's been ongoing for the past five or six years is probably the most comprehensive. And the church is in good shape, and I, I'm sure it's going to be here for many more years to come. But now, the I think the next task ahead of us is to work on the restoration of the cemetery. Yeah, I think this one was. 
probably around the turn of the century that this one was uh, taken. It's a beautiful building. It's what the oldest church between Amherstburg and uh, Brantford. Brantford. And uh, we're, we're very fortunate to, to have the church still standing in St. Thomas. No, I think that this picture might have been taken at the time of the restoration in 1894. And that may be the committee. But uh, all these pictures that have all these stones in it, they should all be blown up and the stones all numbered. Well, they're going to do that this year. They're going to uh, survey the cemetery. Survey the cemetery and all the stones in it, and they'll all get a number. And we should use all these photographs and identify uh, them by a number. Every one of these should have a number. Now, is it possible some of these stones were look what we today would would think they're probably stones? Could be? Could these be some of the old wooden markers that uh, we know were in place in the cemetery? I don't think. I, I think you could tell if they were wooden. I think these are all marble or granite. Oh, well, there's the white bronze monument there. I think that's the nickel monument. You can see it in the left hand side there. Oh, is it stands it? quite? out quite clearly. That would be in the mid-1880s to yes. the 90s. I'm not sure of this, but I think Jeff would uh, be able to date this picture, but I, I have an idea it's the Restoration Committee or after the, the first restoration a hundred years ago. That's the uh, Thomas Williams home. Pretty old picture. You see the church in the background there. That was built by the Ladies Benevolent and Temperance Society? Yes, yeah. Uh, and it was uh, Thomas Williams, what, he was a, a wealthy land landholder from Southwold. West Elgin, Southwold? Yeah. And uh, he, he didn't build this, but he gave enough money, I think $1,000, that uh, uh, with the stipulation that it had to be named after him. And uh, that's why it is named out. He didn't build it. The, as you say, the, the Women's Temperance Association built it. And still run it today. Yes. The local uh, WCTU still, be, still maintains it. And uh, But one week from today is the last annual meeting. And one week from today. That, that's, that's quite amazing. This is about, is it 1883? Or early 1880s that it was built? No, it was built in the 70s. Oh, it was built in the 70s. Oh, okay. 78, 79, okay. I think. Yeah, it's, uh, it's too bad to see this happen, but uh, that's progress. They just couldn't. Uh, uh, it, was, it was just not up to standards. No. And the province wouldn't support it when we have such uh, good facilities around here. It wasn't feasible to be operating it. It is unfortunate. It was sad to see I was at the church uh, last week and see the for sale sign out in the front lawn. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, it's up for sale right it now. It is? Yes, it is. Is that right? Well, it, well, that'll be interesting to see who gets that. Very interesting. Well, now we're going to go to Talbot Street and uh, start our journey down Talbot Street from uh, the West End. This is a chalk drawing. The original of this is in the museum. Elgin County Pioneer Museum. So we're this we're looking to the northwest right now. Uh, yeah, westerly along Talbot Street from the top of Church Street, and it's about 1855, 55, 56, 57 in there. And these are the buildings that were on the stilts. It's a chalk drawing, and very very fine, quite a bit of detail. And thank goodness uh, whoever did it did it. Uh, there's a, a strip, a curved strip behind those buildings, and that goes to Lynnhurst. Oh, yes. And it was the laneway to Garrett Smith's farm over in there. So these buildings are all gone today, and I guess it, as we go towards the, the left-hand side of the, the, the buildings, uh, that's about where Jumbo would be today? Yeah, Jumbo would be right there today. That's right. Now, I don't remember buildings being there, but I do remember foundations of buildings being there in my time. There are still some remains of foundations along oh, there wow. today. You can see them on the hillside. I'm not telling my age then by saying no, that. No, they're still there, Doc. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I don't think any of these buildings... Uh, so at this time in 1855, 
really St. Thomas, I guess uh, the Metcalf block had been constructed at, Met, at uh, Metcalf and Talbot by Benjamin Drake in about 1854, but most of the business was was west of Metcalf Street. Yeah, it, it, they just had some kind of a fetish that they had to stay in the west end of St. Thomas. The further out they got, it was just, whether it was bad luck or what, they just couldn't... Uh, couldn't fathom the idea of uh, of going so far far to the east. The Metcalf, well, the Metcalf went broke, and it wasn't uh, all because of the uh, the fact that it, of the building there, but it, that was a factor in his uh, bankruptcy. I think that he couldn't rent the stores or office spaces in that because it was building. too far east, too way too far east. People <laughs> just wouldn't go that far to do business. They just uh, wouldn't. And it was a beautiful building that Drake built there, that Metcalf block, part of which is still standing today. But uh, it wasn't a, a financial success for Drake, that's for sure. And of course, the Depression came after the Crimean War, and uh, that just killed him. Now, we're, we're looking west here from the top of Church Street, and now we're going to look to the east uh, from the same location this, this is a, a pastel that was done. I just forget the name of the man that did it, but uh, it was in 1863, and he was just passing through, and so fortunate that he did do it because all of the buildings on the north side or the left-hand side of the picture were burned in a fire two years later. So this is the only uh, depiction we have of anything that uh, was standing at that time. Uh, immediately on the right hand side of this picture uh, there's a strip which is a building which is the uh, Ermatinger block. Edward Ermatinger built that building and it uh, stood for many years until the 1920s and uh, in that building the St. Thomas Times had its start. Uh, the Bank of Elgin County was located there. Uh, the St. Thomas Standard was printed there. Is this would this have been the post office it too was, here? It was the post office. It was uh, so much tied into the history of St. Thomas. This particular building. Further down, on the same side of the street, the south. We're on side, the right hand side. On the, the right picture. hand side, yeah. There, there's a, a large building, and that is the old Hutchison House. It was built in 1855, and directly behind that, or beside it, to the east is the old town hall. And you can see the dome of the town hall there on the, on the right hand side. Yeah, that's all you can see uh, of the town hall. The Hutchison House dwarfs it. Now the Hutchison House was a very prominent hotel in St. Thomas and until the Grand Central was built in the 1880s it was the, the leading hotel, a very large hotel and a good hotel too. Now was the Hutchison House, did it become the Mansion House or is the Mansion House? No, the Mansion House was ahead of both of these buildings. Oh. The mansion house was gone. The mansion house was, uh, I think the mansion house was a little to the west of the, uh, the Hutchison house, more on the parking lot of where the mansion towers are okay. today. But it predated the Hutchison house. Uh, further down in the center of the picture, uh, you can see how Talbot Street winds in this curve here. If you were to go and look at it today, it still winds in the same curve. That's right, like at Stanley that. Street. Yes, it goes. this goes right into Stanley, and it's still the same curve there. It hasn't changed at all. Uh, this goes into Stanley Street, and there's a row of buildings in the center of the picture. They were standing, or most of them were standing. This Now, the location is uh, where Tim Hortons, Tim Hortons is. Tim at the West End. Today. But those buildings were still standing, or most of them were still standing in the uh, 1960s until 1969, 68 or 69, that when they came down. So uh, today there's nothing in this photograph that's uh, still standing today. Mm -hmm. Everything's gone. But it's not that long that, uh, that they uh, were removed. I don't, do you remember those buildings no, up I there? No, I can't recall them. No, but uh, I certainly recall when they were taken down. Now, this is the Ermatinger block. It was the Erie Iron Works at this particular time. So this is back to, we're back to Church and Talbot again. Yeah, look, look, we're looking in a, in a westerly, southwesterly direction here, back from what we were before. 
The building in behind, I wonder if that was the white bronze building. Probably was. I, I never noticed that in the picture before. The I picture think looks like it's been cropped it or something. Cropped. Yeah. I was just going to say that. There's no question this picture's been cropped. Uh, too bad, really. I'd like to see the original of it. So after Ermatinger, they, they vacated. This was the Erie Iron Works for a number of years? Yes, it was. It was, it was the Erie Iron Works until, I believe, until uh, the 1920s. And then they went down on Moore Street, mm -hmm. and then they were burned out on Moore Street. But uh, yes, they went into this building. But this building was built, I think, in 1845. 1845, I think it was about that. And, and it was the first three-story building in St. Thomas, although others were to follow very shortly after that. But it was just a, a, a prime location and uh, uh, just ideal. Ermatinger, Ermatinger came to St. Thomas in 1830. And uh, he just seemed to take over. He was a very leading light. Definitely in the one city. of our most prominent citizens. Oh yes, very much so. Yeah. Member of Parliament, postmaster, storekeeper, banker. He w he was just everything until the day he died in the 1870s. And his fan, his uh, son. He wrote the book, uh, The Life of Colonel Talbot, and the son wrote the Talbot Regime. And they're both buried over in the old English churchyard. Now, this is one of my the most favorite. I have a lot of pictures that I like of St. Thomas, but there's just something about this one that really, it's I don't know, I, it just captures a particular era in St. Thomas. Well, it is. It's one of the best, uh, the best pictures that we've got of St. Thomas. It, it's it's such a. It was 1880 that this one was taken, and and it shows the town hall in the center, the town hall at its just at its peak. And to the right is the uh, the Hutchison House, and way down on the left-hand side of the picture is Dan Drake's livery stable. Not very clear, but that's Dan Drake's down at the end. And you can see on the the right-hand side the old street, the horse-drawn streetcar. It's the only picture we have of the horse-drawn streetcar. And the street railway started in 1879. Yeah. So this is quite soon after. Yeah. And this is Lumber Day. At wood, the a, a wood market. Wood market. Yes, a wood market where the farmers brought their wood in and sold it to the city folk in St. Thomas. I guess it wouldn't quite be a city then, but it was shortly to become a city. Well, the town hall is a beautiful building. It was built uh, in 1850 by the township of Yarmouth as the township offices. And when uh, St. Thomas was incorporated as a village in 1852, it uh, became the town hall for St. Thomas. And it uh, was used as the town hall and later city hall uh, when we were incorporated as a city in 1881 and was used until 1899 when we moved into the present building on Talbot Street. And it, later it was uh, used as an acetylene factory for a while, a carpet factory. Later it became the, the car barns for the street railway and uh, was demolished about uh, 1920. But uh, just it's a beautiful building, and the fire hall was was out, out behind it, Don. Yep, fire hall was behind, and uh, it was the focal point of St. Thomas social activity, particularly before the uh, opera house was built in 1873. All your plays and your political uh, meetings and so forth were held in this building, and even after 1873, when the opera house was built, many of the political rallies were still held in this building. Uh, uh, Sir John A. Macdonald held meetings in this building. Laurier held a meeting in this building. Uh, the the Salvation Army had their first uh, meeting. So in. Booth would have been, would that be in one of Booth, Booth's visits to St. Thomas? Booth spoke in this building, but that was a long after the Salvation Army was established in St. Okay. Thomas. That, that was in the 1890s. St. Thomas had, I believe, the sixth uh, oldest uh, Salvation Army Corps in uh, Canada. The first one was in London and it was only within a year they were over here holding services and they held them in the town hall. But yes, uh, General uh, Booth, William Booth, held his meeting in the town hall. So these buildings, this picture here, all the buildings are gone. Today it's the site of the town hall towers and the mansion house yes, apartments. Yes, at the corner of Stanley and Talbot Street. That's right. We, we tend to uh, when we know where these buildings are, we tend to forget to tell other people. I think it helps so when you can put it into a present-day context, yeah. what, what you're looking at. 
Now, right behind at the back of the fire hall, the second, uh, the the second hall, dome, yeah, is this is at the side of the town hall. And this was the Beaver Fire Company in 1860. I do have the original of this photograph, the 1860 photograph. It has some coloring on it. And uh, I believe Dan Drake is the captain of that. There were two, uh, two fire companies in St. Thomas during quite a bit of the time. Uh, Fireflies, the Fireflies and the uh, Beaver Company. And when there would be an alarm for fires, uh, there was a race to get there. And uh, once, so, they, once they got there, there was no animosity or any feelings. But till they got there, they, they, uh, it was quite a thing. And I believe at the end of the year, the, the fire company that got there first, I don't know where the fire, fire fly company was, but the company that got there first uh, were uh, treated to a dinner by the other company, an oyster uh, dinner. Well, the, the beaver, the, the history of firefighting certainly deserves to, uh, to be written. I know Dave Rock from the fire department is working on that, and I look forward to and I spend a lot of time doing research. Yeah, I hope these things come to, to bear fruition because uh, uh, Dave Rock uh, doing this on the fire department, that's just excellent. And uh, uh, this uh, Richard Cartwright is doing a history of the Horticultural Society yes. at the present time. I think they're coming up to 125 years. Yeah, that's right. And uh, Wayne Padden has done so much work on uh, behalf of the railways in St. Thomas. And his new golf, the history of oh, the golf the, course. The yeah. history of the golf course, yes. Uh, Everybody's writing books. Well, it? that's good. And, and I'm glad they're, they're concentrating on, on certain aspects. Uh, you should write a book, Steve. Yeah, I think you should too, Don. <laughs> <laughs> We're still at the town hall at Stanley and Talbot Street. Uh, this is taken... Again, it's not a very well uh, thought out picture, probably taken by W.E. Linda. Yeah, it would be from about his store. From his, his store. Uh, just as some, for something to do. And uh, he, he's taken this, and you can see on the left the corner of the town hall, and on the right the Hutchison House. But I think, I think what appeals to, it appeals to me in this and the uh, one we saw earlier is that this is St. Thomas in action. Um, you know, it's, it's not a posed picture in any way. Again, this looks like almost a market day, a market day in uh, in St. Thomas. There's quite a crowd gathered. Oh, yes, it's definitely a market day. Uh, I don't know what particular, just maybe a market day, mm -hmm. but uh, they, they had an excellent market. You see, the market started in the town hall, uh, uh, and then it, it came out into the street, and it was around the town hall, and eventually it spread from Stanley Street over to William Street. And it's interesting, there's still a, a food market there today, so to speak, with the Nectal Food Store. Oh, yeah, that's you know, right. right uh, out, I never thought of You know, we've that. had, uh, and then prior to that, the old co-op. So uh, food has been associated with that site uh, between uh, Stanley and William for, you know, gosh, 140 years now. For, for some time, we had two markets in St. Thomas, the St. Andrew's Market and the uh, Horton Market. We've still got the Horton Market. It's still hanging on, but markets aren't just what they uh, once were to the people. This is a, a picture taken of the town hall after it was a town hall. It's, it's just used here as probably storage. And uh, I think this was taken maybe shortly. No, it must have been taken. You can still see the Hutchison house. Yes, and this is an old post. This is off a postcard. I've seen the postcard, you know, just 1906 thereabouts. So this could be just before the time that uh, it became the car barns. Yeah, but uh, but uh, you know, it, well, maybe. I don't I don't remember seeing the Hutchison House in the postcard, but it might. I'll have to have a look at that. But this is the way it looked when it was tore down. Maybe uh, the it must have been. I I've searched the newspapers uh, to try and find a newspaper account of this building. Uh, uh, being demolished and there's just there's no references in the newspaper so I don't know I don't think anybody was sorry to see it go by that point mm -hmm. no I don't I don't think they would do look at that nice stone up there the, the date stone date stone yeah. up there wouldn't that be nice yeah. to love to know what happened to it wouldn't that be something if somebody dug that up now this is uh, that's a great picture I, I don't I suppose you've never maybe seen this picture I have it's in the, yeah. it's in a uh, 
one of the industrial journals or magazines that's been published on St. Thomas. It's not, oh yes, a little picture, that's yep. right. It's not one that uh, I show very often. Um, it shows the car barns of the St. Thomas Street Railway. Uh, the, the street railway buildings are on the right, but they did use the old town hall also. And they, they cut big doors in the end of the town hall, and I think the, these cars were stored inside the old town hall. Um, I didn't know that. The, the photograph, uh, I'll have to show you later, it's a little clearer in the book, and it shows, uh, it shows you can see quite clearly that there's doors on the town hall. Really? Really, what a disgraceful thing to do to our old <laughs> town hall. So, uh, this so the, the street railway was what electrified about 1897, 98 thereabouts. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it operated until what, 1926. 27, I think. 27. Okay. Uh, this building on the right, I don't remember the town hall, but the building on the right, I do remember as being the uh, metal signs part of the metal signs operation, and was there until uh, uh, they built the town hall towers. So it would be there through the 50s, that building. We're still at the same intersection of Stanley and Talbot Street, looking south uh, along Stanley Street. Uh, the town hall is on the right-hand side. You can see parts of the town hall on the right. And uh, on the left, you can just see a corner of the Victoria block, which... Uh, was there until I guess the 19... Uh, 19... 11, 12 thereabouts when the building was... Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Now in the distance you can see Dan Drake's livery stable down there. And on the left there's a building that has a canopy over it and yes. that's the Farmers Exchange. And that was a hotel? That was a hotel. It was there a long time. It was there until Prohibition. <laughs> it was the uh, first hotel my father went into. Was it? Yeah. He often spoke of the Farmer's Exchange. It was an easy hotel to get into. Um, I just can't remember uh, who ran that. Brommel. Brommel. Yeah. William Brommel, yes. He, he ran that hotel. Yeah. Now, Drake's uh, livery stable there, that's about the, what, the corner of uh, Center and, uh, and uh, Stanley. Stanley Street. Yeah. yeah. There's a, a house, a there, house there, there today, today yeah. yeah. Dan Drake was a very active man. He, 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 he claimed to be the first white child born in St. Thomas, but that's not quite right. But he got away with it all his life, and his obituary states that he was the first white child. He served a number of years as, uh, as mayor of the city. Yes, he did. In, in, in the, the town of St. Thomas, 70s, too. Yes, he did. And, and I think a good mayor, too. Yeah. Well, actually, he was against the waterworks, so he refused to. He stepped out of the chair, I believe. Uh, during the, the debate for the waterworks in 1874, and somebody else sat in the chair for mayor, and there was uh, to do some more research into that. But uh, he's buried. He's buried, I believe, in the old English. But he's does. He's not in a marked grave. He's not marked. No. Nope. Uh, I knew his grandson. His grandson was at the uh, 1967 DCI reunion, and was the oldest graduate to attend that reunion. And I remember talking to him, and he telling me how his grandfather died in his arms, Dan Drake. I, I can't remember the fellow's name now. It wasn't Drake. It was his uh, daughter's uh, son, but uh, he, he told me that, that story. He was quite an interesting old man and quite an old man. This Farmer's Exchange Hotel, I remember Bill Pettit. He, he used to work at the uh, Municipal World, and uh, Bill Pettit, that's uh, just retired from the fire department, Yes. his father, he told me a story about a fellow that used to live over St. George Street. And he had been in the, uh, he, what he did, he had pigs and he collected swill, just uh, garbage from uh, different hotels and restaurants around St. Thomas and put it in barrels. Then he'd go into the hotel and have a few drinks. He was an Englishman. And uh, he went in and had a few drinks this day and left with his barrels of swill and was going went down St. George Street and up the hill on the other side and it was a pretty steep hill, steeper than it is now and it's still steep. And the barrels took off. <laughs> he turned his wagon around and came back into town, went into the hotel again. Hoops and staves 
and barrels of swill went over St. George Street Hill. Let's have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I just forget the fellow's name. I should know it, but uh, Bill Pettit telling that story, it was so funny, gosh. Now, from Stanley Street, looking over to William Street, this was the market around the turn of the century. It was a big market, St. Andrew's Market, very, very active. Uh, this looks like it might have been a Sunday morning that this one was taken. Now, on the left-hand side of the picture, you can see uh, part of the old Penwarden Royal Hotel, Iroquois Hotel, and then in the just left of center is the City Hotel that was run by the the Bugner family. And to the uh, right of that was Edmonds uh, Black, uh, Horseshoeing, I believe, and Dan. Dan uh, Barnes, uh, his uh, uh, blacksmith shop in there. And uh, I remember showing these slides one time, and uh, uh, Dan Barnes' son called, up, called me up afterwards and told me all about uh, his father running this uh, place of business in there. Well, we're... Uh Quickly running out of time here, Don, and this is going to have to be the end of our of part one of the, the Cameron collection slides of early St. Thomas. I want to thank Don for, for showing these slides. We're going to continue on and with, the, with another show and like to thank uh, all of you eight, uh, my apologies, Shaw Cable, for, for their uh, allowing us to come into their studio tonight. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this show and uh, thank you for watching. Local history on Shaw Cable. Thank you very much, Steve. Thanks, Don.